So, sooner or later, every practicing magician must encounter the thing called psychiatry, not necessarily as a patient or impatient, but as a person who will decide between the paradigms of naive realism, naive materialism, scientism, or magic. Now, as an example, I will use Jan Dirk Blom's Dictionary of Hallucinations and try to attempt to explain hallucinations from a magical perspective, because often persons that experience one, two or three such symptoms are diagnosed as schizophrenic patients and relegated to psychiatry and pharmacology. Now, psychiatry at its basis doesn't heal people, it manages symptoms. And in order to manage symptoms, you need to medicate the person so that it gets very calm and very understandingly passive in order to break his will and believe, make him believe that he's a schizo, make him believe that he's an insane person. And then the process of healing begins, meaning you buy the paradigm of psychiatry and return to the normal life as a person who may experience still the same hallucinations, but relegates it to psychiatry. Now, there are sensitive minds that are within the paradigm of psychiatry and I wouldn't recommend changing their belief systems in psychiatry because it might end up in a naughty fashion. However, there are people experiencing, let's say, extended realities or virtualities that psychiatrists are dreamt of. Sometimes I like to jokingly say that there is no psychiatrist that achieve anything great in his life However, prospectively looking, they like to retrospect in the ancient days and diagnose every great historical figure with some psychiatric malady. Alexander the Great, megalomania, narcissism, Jean d'Arc, schizophrenic, and so on, so on. So, a lady that led armies towards the Bastille was a schizophrenic. Do you buy it? Or do you prefer to believe that she did hear the heavenly voices? and she was ordered to march on Bastille, gathering men with her charisma. Well, a psychiatrist might diagnose her with schizophrenia, however, psychiatrists didn't lead an army of men upon Bastille. Now, let's see, a dictionary of hallucinations. Oh, by the way, in the meantime, I may explain the voices of certain uh, schizophrenic patients. Well, imagine that there are certain astral parasites or mental larvae that are feeding off the Broca area and the auditory cortex. And by the time this larva eats out the mental powers of such a patient, the patient is forced to listen to the voices and therefore his concentration and mental power is consumed by those pseudo-personalities that emerge. Therefore, it's neurobiology and magic. Guess what? Problem solved. And any psychiatrist asked about etiology of a given sickness or an illness will say, well, we don't know because we don't know how the brain works, but they're all the more readily serving drugs that are purported to regulate the dopamine levels, which is bullshit. So, Without knowledge of the etiology and the pet theory of dopamine and attacking certain dopaminergic tracts of various types of dopamine receptors, they have no solid theory to interpret it. Okay, now let's see. Absentism and hallucinations. Now we know that the green fairy or absent caused hallucinations, right? The problem is that it caused similar hallucinations as in, for example, uh, dementia in post-alcoholics that have seen naughty, nasty things. For example, the prostitutes that were walking through the streets were seen as half decaying corpses and so on and so on. I would call it that people with low barriers, low energetic barriers, 
with damaged souls and with damaged soul crafts and the protection zones that I mentioned in the Egyptian soul economy are ah, tuning to naughty uh, realities of the dead and the demons that like to play a bit with their senses. So I posit an objective reality that is extended to this and tada, the problem of unconscious solved, the problem of dreams solved somehow. You don't need the Jungian depth psychology to interpret it. In fact, Jungian abandoned his ideas of the Red Book that could make a beautiful explanation and decided to scientifize it. It doesn't work that way. Because when he tried to make it more scientific, all the scientists turned away from him, like Wolfgang Pauli in 1950s, that said that Jungian depth psychology is not a science, it is more of an artistic something. Now, not disregarding the input that uh, Jung has made into mm, helping people, I would mention John Weir Perry and his uh, Diabasis Institute in San Francisco. He could elevate and help people with minor to medium psychosis, so-called, by treating it as a process of self-healing of the mind. And he went through plenty of ceremonies, uh, psy psychological therapies, in order to help people in medium to low range psychosis to heal themselves, to go through the full cycle. Now, humanist experimental psychiatry was abandoned in favor of pharmacological bullshit. So we have the absent drinker that sees the green fairy, the spirit of the absent, of the absention, and uh, goes completely deranged and delusional while drowning into this dimension of the green darling. And uh, every plant has a form of a spirit attached to it and it reacts with the mind too. Now what do we have here? The next one, acquired, that's not acoustic hallucinations or already explained sometimes if they are not the larva of the mind that swallow your mind, you may hear the whispers of the dead. Yes, the dead may speak and in some rituals like in Greek or Roman necromancy offering them certain substances made them very talkative. So I'm not proposing a return to Middle Ages, I'm proposing an extended view based both on the neurobiological understanding, not psychiatric paradigm, and magical understandings. Aesthetic illusion, both terms are adapted to the grip verb I stand and style, to perceive that the content of a work of art is real. You know, with the idea of how Sinosman spares focus, if you focus enough beauty into it, enough spirits, enough muses and inspiration, you make a beautiful, inspired art. When someone who is very sensitive in soul to such reception, he may perceive this art as if real, it is really painted, he enters the dimension of this art, of the mind of the artist, by a weird link that makes the art seem so real and so beautiful that he cannot differentiate it from a reality. Now, what do we have here? after image. This is of course referred to the optical illusion if we stare at the uh, light for too long there is an after image. So let us also differentiate between optical illusions and occult phenomena. Phone um, I want to go through all of them. Alice in Wonderland Syndrome, how wonderful. Changes in size, distance or position of stationary object within the subject's visual field. It may be caused both by drug abuse, but in normal minds too, if, uh, for example, person is triggered to such a perception by a change of consciousness in Sia, as called by Egyptian chemitism or by an entity that induces the mind in such a hmm, state. What else? 
the substances and hallucinations. Let's take something for a B. B, 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 B. Ah, so many hallucinations. Imagine that just one or two of them makes a person diagnosed with heavy psychosis or periodic psychosis or an episode of other psychosis and then those people are dragged because Mr. Psychiatrist say oh yes we have two symptoms that are presenting the uh, criteria for your diagnosis that this is induced or something permanent and you're chronically ill for the rest of your life now apparition apparitions are perfectly normal and they were seen throughout centuries as the dead, as ghosts, as various other things. Yet, imagine that majority of population seen at least one apparition throughout lifetime. But if you end up in the wrong hands, at the wrong place, and tell it to a psychiatrist, then something's wrong with you. If, you, if your child reports having second sight or seeing ghosts or apparitions, most tragically, it is referred to a bloody psychiatrist that will administer drugs that are not meant for children because they are tested on adults. Yet pharmacological companies that tested it on certain segments of population will extend the criteria in order to sell more drugs to the people. Now I understand that uh, Scientologists fight with psychiatry, but I want nothing to do with them because this is a brainwashing device by, invented by Hubbard and I do not wish to align with them. I just posit a return to humanistic psychiatry that nowadays is understood as anti-psychiatry. Both Foucault and others were anti-psychiatrists. Anti-psychiatry or humanistic psychiatry of Lang, Lang and others is destroyed, it lays in ruins and it is replaced by pharmacological bullshit. Now, and how better control our insane subjects if not by administering drugs and making them into little zombies so that they can be broken into the paradigm of a psychiatry. Right? That makes some lives easier but it doesn't solve the problem. There are various means of trying to help yourself when you are undergoing, as they call it, a mental crisis. For example, anxiety attacks. You know how many things out there can cause an anxiety attacks? All the stress, all the fear that human generates in this city. It doesn't simply disappear. There are so many, let's call it, fauna and flora of the astral parasitical realm that can attach to you and make you feel panic, anxiety. Well, whenever I encounter a bit of an anxiety, I locate it in my body, I create a vortex around it, lock it, and throw it out of my body, and it immediately disappears. Therefore, I have no anxiety attacks anymore. Thanks to my guardians and thanks to God and thanks to my own techniques that helped me to survive. The same goes for astral parasites that are uh, responsible for hearing the voices that are nasty, that are compulsive and so on. Everything requires healing, bodily sensations and so on. I'll tell you a story. When I was once an inmate at a psychiatric institution in Eastern Europe, in a closed ward, I was going to sleep in an overpacked, overcrowded, closed ward of an institution. And there was a man sleeping on the corridor, and he was tied by the people that were serving the regime of psychiatry. And as he went throughout the night, I've seen six shadows taking these kind of sharp shadow things and poking it in the guy as he was screaming in pain. Uh, the next day I asked him, hey man, so what's up? Can you see them? What they're doing to you? He said, uh, they are my hallucinations, they're made in my mind, my psychiatrist told me. 
And I said, listen, your psychiatrist told you, okay. And I left it like that because I didn't want to tell the guy again that these things are fucking real. And that he was tortured by some fucking waves. So, um, I hope it explains a lot about the interaction and how psychiatric prisons help no one. And how psychiatry, and if it's not humanist psychiatry, if it's not tied with other approaches, and I don't mean like holistic bullshit crystals and other shit, but true work, true magical work, and true therapy. Therapeion means to heal, to help. Not to consign a person for the rest of his life to a bloody psychiatric lie. That's the point I wanted to make. Thank you.